Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our 5 Minute Histories videos and today I'm in the 500 block of North Caroline Street in East Baltimore and behind me is the former Dunbar High School building. It's currently a high school, a different name, uh, the National Academy Foundation High School, but we're going to talk about its former use as Dunbar. I am sure many of you know Dunbar grads and I am sure many of you know some of the sports legends that have come out of Dunbar. We'll get to those, but let's start uh, with our story with uh, who was Dunbar that the name the, the school was named after and uh, what role did the school play in advocating for better education facilities in a time before Brown versus Board of Education where separate but equal was the mantra and the equal happened often only after hard, hard fought battles. All right, but who was, uh, who was Dunbar? Dunbar was Paul Lawrence Dunbar. He was considered, uh, by, is considered by many as uh, America's first preeminent nationally important black poet. In 1895, he had his breakout uh, sort of first collection called Majors and Minors. And then a year later, just another smash hit called Lyrics of a Lowly Life. He, um, he often wrote in his poems and other writings about uh, the black experience in America. He grew up in Dayton, Ohio, um, where he went on to become uh, the class poet. He published poems in high school in the, in the Dayton newspaper. He even became editor, while still in high school, of a, of a black newspaper in Dayton founded by Orville Wright of the Wright brothers, uh, who went on to help him financially publish some of his early writings. Um, he was a hit here and in England where he went over and writ, wrote a, uh, a small operetta with none other than Samuel Taylor Coleridge. So hobnobbing with the literary greats uh, of, uh, of the world. Um, sadly, he died in 1906 uh, at the age of 33, but is considered uh, was considered back then uh, sort of the preeminent black poet. And today is considered one of America's preeminent poets, uh, period, of any uh, uh, skin color whatsoever. Um, so now we know why the uh, Dunbar teams are called the poets after Paul Lawrence Dunbar. What about the high school? It was founded in 1890, not at this location, as a primary school. It was called uh, 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 An Colored Annex School Number no. 2. And it, uh, and it spent its first years, uh, again, only as a primary school. It uh, has had three different locations for before coming here. And then each of those are really early examples of where advocates, civil rights advocates, uh, were pushing for better education facilities uh, for Baltimore's African-American kids, really ahead of the national curve. Um, the primary school soon outgrew its, uh, its location. Um, and a group, especially a group called the Colored Citizens Equitable Improvement Association um, uh, began agitating for a new school building which was built in 1916. Not this building yet, but it's a great example. It was a state-of-the-art facility with 24 classrooms and, uh, and a shop, a wood shop. Um, but it's an example of how in Baltimore we were ahead of the curve, advocating for better uh, classrooms for black Baltimore kids 20 years before the NAACP in the 1930s really began to pick up the mantle and advocate nationally for the same thing. In one more uh, uh, hop, in uh, the uh, folks here in East Baltimore um, again agitated for a better uh, education facility. And in 1932, they got the current building behind me. If you look at this building and say, hey, that looks like the Art Deco building uh, downtown that we now call 10 Light Street, you're right. It was built by the same architects, Taylor and Fisher, um, who did that building in 1929 and did this building in 1932, the same Art Deco style. Um, this building was even uh, bigger and more state-of-the-art, 47 uh, classrooms uh, and a capacity for 1,200 pupils. In a final stage of advocacy in, 19, in the 1960s and 70s, um, students here began demonstrating for an even bigger and better uh, uh, building. Um, students with the Student Committee on Racial Equality, CORE, if you know your civil rights history, um, had pickets outside this building uh, for an upgrade. And some students even went on to do a sit-in that turned into a, a sleep-in at the city's Department of Education. In 1974, they moved, uh, Dunbar moved to its current building. Um, it had gone from being a primary school to the city's first junior high school for black Baltimore kids um, to, in 1938, a high school. And now today, in its uh, current location, uh, still a high school going strong. 
All right, let's wrap up with a few words about uh, Dunbar uh, alums, and we'll get to the sports folks. Uh, but before the sports, for, sports folks, a number who you may know, Clarence Blount was a principal here. He went on to become the first African-American majority state Senate leader. Clarence Du Burns spent 22 years here as a uh, locker room attendant before becoming a uh, city council member and then the city's first uh, black mayor. Robert Bell graduated from here and went on to become the highest judge in the state of Maryland, the chief of the Maryland Court of Appeals. Tupac Shakur spent his ninth grade here um, and Reginald Lewis uh, graduated here. He became America's first black businessman to grow a billion dollar business. We know him, of course, for the museum downtown. All right, sports. I have counted no fewer than five uh, graduates who played in the NFL and nine graduates who played basketball um, in the NBA. And here's a fun thing. If you Google greatest basketball, greatest high school basketball team ever, you will get lots of different sources, lots of different voices that all lead to the conclusion that it was the 1982 through 1983 Dunbar Poets that was the greatest high school basketball team ever. Um, folks like Muggsy Bowe, and Reggie Lewis and Reggie Williams. If you'd like to learn more about that, there's a wonderful book called The Boys of Dunbar, A Story of Love, Hope, and Basketball. Check it out. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.